guys, welcome back. It is your favorite game for the limp, and I'm here with Atlantic Sentinels. I'm gonna do a quick playthrough for you all. I tried to get everything as squished in as possible, but it takes a fair amount of space. So I have it overlapping a little bit, but I think it will work for our purposes. Now I did do a review on this game recently. Make sure you go check that out if you want to see the thoughts on it. But I did get some comments and some people talking to me about the rule book and it being a little fiddly. I do tend not to address rule books as much as I do some of the other aspects of games. And it's just because of the brain injury thing. My memory is a little hit and miss. So I already have a problem with rule books. So it's harder to, to rate them. But we're going to go on with this. Uh, just understand that there are some like charts and some things that are in this rule book that go with like the hunters. So not everything is directly related to Atlantic Sentinels. It is what it is. It's, I think it was a design choice to give people access to different materials if they combine the games. But I, I think any rule book out there can be tweaked and can be improved. No rule book is perfect. If they do a second edition on this, they will probably touch up the issues. So let's just jump in. We're going to do one quick convoy. I've left my escort group as the same one that I started with for my review. It is B5, so it's British 5. I start with four destroyers slash frigates, and then I've got three of these Corvettes. I do have the HFDF radar. I get to start with that, and I have one that has the Type 271 uh, radar as well. They're all trained, none of them are green, they're all just the, the basic starting thing. We've got our little sequence of play. So this is what I'm gonna use. I'm going to use their little thing of cards here, and that's how I'm going to play out this mission. We're gonna see how well their sequence of play works. I'm anticipating it doing okay. I think I have noticed one thing that they did miss, but we'll hit that when we come up to it. I've got B5 over here in the UK where he starts. I got a little convoy marker next to him to designate what type of convoy I have. Our convoy, uh, oh, convoy, our convoy direction is going to be going left. So we're going west, wagons west, all the way over here towards St. John. So we're set up there. Escort mat set up. That's set up. This is here. I might have to flip this depending on the convoy we get. Uh, prepare to play. This is guard zero. Select our escort group where I did that. Prepare, ah, prepare the log sheet. We're not worrying about the log sheets for our purposes here. Set up escort group display mat. That's this piece here. We're good. Place escort group marker. That's what we already did here. So card zero is good. We're, we're set. Card one, escort mission start. So get mission from a, uh, A1A or A1B. So let me grab my charts here. We've got lots of player aids. And that's the one thing about this game and all the games like it. You do have to fiddle fart with all the charts all the different damn time and roll on everything. So this is A4. Let's refit and upgrade. Here we go. Convoy assignment. We are at Londonbury. Yes, we're at Londonbury. It's 1942, so we're just rolling a simple D6 to see if we are getting a large or a small convoy. And from what I was reading in the rule books, uh, the ON and the HX or SC, it doesn't matter. It doesn't affect anything. All you need to know is large or small. They put that in for like uh, historical purposes, but I think that just kind of confuses people. That part could have been left out. All right, so let's roll, see what we get. We got a small convoy, small convoy. Uh, we'll flip this one over to small. It and our marker are gonna be put in the first box. So the first box is not the box that you start with. It's actually the OMP box. So either west or east, that's where you start. And then all these other white and gray boxes are actually the transit boxes as you're going through. So we have did that. We got our mission. We are doing a small convoy. Check for cam support on A4 for the first mission only. A4, I just had A4. All right. 
uh, until 8.42 this one. Uh, and then long range air from 8.42 on is what this looks like. Okay. Okay, so we're rolling here. We're seeing if we've got any cam support. This is a 2D6 roll. My guess is I won't get it, but it is what it is. We got a 12. No, we didn't. An 11 would have been it. We got snake eyes. So we do not get any cam support. Uh, let's see. We are going to enter the west or east OMP boxes. Like I said, place a convoy mark, uh, marker. Where'd my other card go? Zero on the bottom? Yeah. Okay. We'll set these off to the side so I know I burned through them. Okay. Two. Move escort group to the next travel box. Roll for encounters. If no encounter, uh, go to step one above. So basically, you are going to go to these boxes and you're going to start rolling for your encounters uh, the whole way through. Oh, I accidentally hit the, uh, the convoy marker direction. So we're going to roll for each one of these boxes till we get all the way across. Now there's a good chance you could not get an encounter. Let's see where our encounter boxes are. Where are all the encounter boxes? All right, where are they? If that's something they could put on there. Roll for encounters. Roll for encounters on what chart? You had it on the others. Why are you not putting it here? Why did you not put it here? Uh, it's not that. That's escort detection. That's attacks. Random events. Uh, H1. This is different types of ships that we can run into. Small freighters. Here. So it's got to be this. Here we go. It is chart A2. So... This should have had roll for encounters and then in parentheses, uh, A2. That way people know what chart they're rolling on. Yes, you're going to know this after you've done it a, for, uh, a few times, but in the first handful of games that you're playing, you're not going to remember. So that would have been a nice little thing to add on there. Okay, for us, we are, let's see, we're here, right? Yeah. This is where we're starting. We're starting the earliest part. So this is where we're at. So you see about half are not encounters. And seven is the most popular number to roll on a 2D6. So more than likely, you're not going to have an encounter. You could get all the way across with no encounters, uh, get your convoy points. But there are chances. There's one chance for a wolf pack. There's one chance for the FW200. That's the Condor that can attack your convoy, so it's an air attack. And that can be driven off if you have cam air support or long range air support or the CVE. I don't have any of those, so I can't drive that off. All right, so let's put those charts out of the way. Okay, down here at the bottom, I was just looking at the Wolfpack size chart. That's not going to affect us in this weird roll. Wolfpack, we got a seven, and I told you it's most popular, so no encounter. Now here's what I'm gonna do. I'm going to roll and see if I get any encounters. And if I don't, we're just gonna do an encounter with a single uh, U-boat so you guys can see how it goes. So here's what we're gonna do. I am going to stop rolling now for encounters because I have not triggered one. Uh, by rolling. So we're going to just have an encounter because I have to have an encounter here at the very last box. So if encounter occurs, go to card three. So let's go to card three. Let's see what card three says. If a 12 is rolled, that's your random events. So that is C5. Let me just show you guys that real quick. Just, just so I can say I touched on everything. C5 should be the back of something. So neither of these, I'm not going to worry about those. That's just the names. Yeah, here we go. Random events. So a bunch of random stuff can happen as you're going along. This will only happen once. So if you're doing a convoy and you have a random event, if you roll the random event again, you're not going to do another. 
uh, you're just going to uh, ignore it and have a U-book. That's why it's got the asterisk next to it uh, for rolling for an encounter here on our encounter chart. And again, make sure you're looking at the right year and time frame because it does change. You're going to be more likely to have full packs uh, as you get farther along. Uh, more encounters right here in the center when they were heaviest. So we're good there. We don't have an encounter. We did not do a wolf pack and we did not have a condor. If we had a wolf pack, we will go to card four. Uh, that helps to prep for, uh, oh, if you boat or wolf pack, so we are going to card four. Card nine is the air encounter. So if we have the condor, then we're going to do that. So we don't have to do that one. Now we are going to go to card four. Determine day night for the first. If day attack one U boat with support, if available and allowed, that's uh, air support. Forgive me, I'm a little choked up this thing, I'm a little choked up. If the first impulse of the first cycle only of the encounter, place one half of the available U boats in the attack box, the other half will be available in the next and future impulses. That's not gonna matter for us because we're just doing a single, uh, single U boat attack coming in. Now, Something I noticed that was missed and I was reading up and I did not see it because we get into detection and attacking and them attacking all this. It doesn't touch on the weather. Weather is not mentioned on these cards. We're just gonna ignore weather for the moment to make it easy. We'll put it just good so we don't have to worry with it. But do make sure that you roll for the weather. You can have good, fair, poor, or bad that's going to affect it. But I want to have the encounter, so I'm not going to roll because my luck, I'd get like bad and the encounter would be canceled. We need to do whether or not we are having a day or night. So it's one, two, three. What are we going to have? That is that. So we are having a night encounter. Night. So I'll flip this counter over to night. So for us, it's going to go night, day, night. Now that's if we had a uh, more than one attack, more than likely we can probably get this U-boat uh, before it gets to that point. So we don't have to worry about that, uh, the extra impulses. Uh, if day attack one U-boat with air support, we don't have day, we have night and don't have air support anyway. If the first impulse of the first cycle only of the encounter, place one half, the, yeah. If day, you boats either attack one to two or send a contact report, that's a three to six roll on a D6. And wait, if night, uh, all you boats will attack, but also send contact reports on a three to six. Now I thought, maybe I got this confused because I was thinking we detected them before they attack, but it's saying they attack first. Let me check just to make sure. Okay, yeah, I was right. I just need to go farther on the courts. This is just convoy prep. So getting everything set up. First is going to be our detection. Then we attack U-boats. Then U-boats attack convoy. So that's how, it, uh, how it's going to go. All right, we need to place all of our ships out here, all of our escorts, and then figure out where they are going to be approaching from. As you see, there are multiple approach boxes. You see on a 2D6 roll is going to determine where he's going to be here at the top. Let's just push those out of the way for a second. Do you guys bear with me? 2D6 rolls, three to five, he's going here, six to eight here, uh, nine to 11 here, and two and 12, he's going to go here, the rear, but then you are going to roll again to determine which one of the approach vectors as there's multiple. So let's let's get my ships out and then we'll uh, we'll figure this out. All right, so I'm gonna put him there, put him there. That way I've got at least one heavier ship on each side, each flank, because these are the most likely to see U-boats attack. Right. And plus with his 271, this one has the, the 271 radar. He can cover this entire flank. None of the others have it. So I'm only going to be able to do the HFDF over there. Uh, let's put a destroyer. Yeah, we've got a destroyer left, right, center, up and down. Now I've got three other ships. I am going to go one two 
and three. So I'm putting all my eggs in all the baskets. Uh, the only thing I've got, oh, damn it, I grabbed the wrong ones. I grabbed the trained on these guys. Oh, those counters are so similar. Let me switch those around real quick so we can do this correctly. I'm grabbing the wrong counters and I did the same thing over here. Look at this, damn, I'm a dumbass. All right, one up there. One up there, and these train markers can go back because I'm a dummy. All right, and now we'll pull our Corvettes down and put them here. All right, so I have a Corvette and a Destroyer, left, top, and right, and then just one Destroyer to the rear. This way, I'm covering every direction. No matter where he comes from, I've got a chance to get him. All right, real quick, I want to know whether or not uh, the U-boat is contacting. Actually, first I gotta figure out which direction he's coming in from. Let's do our 2d6 roll. 2d6 roll is a five, so he's, oh yes, perfect. He is coming in left, which is where my best is. That's perfect, that's perfect. It gives me two chances and the ability to show this. Now let's do a 1d6 roll. Yes, and he will be doing a contact report. So he is going to be attacking, but on a three to six, he's also doing a contact report, which gives me a bonus when I am attempting to uh, detect him. All right, so now we're on detection. Attempt to detect, ooh, where's the move? Because I can move ships over. Uh, but I'm already going to have the, the bonus of two ships, so I don't think that I need to do that. Let's see. What are we doing? Modifiers that can night surface attack first turn. That's going to be plus one, H class plus one, right? Uh, and it's not one escort. So, yeah, I don't have to move anyone else over. I got this covered already. I got this covered, man. You know shit. You just know it. Bam. You blow them up. And that be it, y'all. That's how we do this. All right. All right. All right. All right. So attempt to detect with HFDF all U-boats that send a contact report. He has sent a contact report. So we can attempt to contact him with HFDF. Also, we can also attempt to detect him with the Type 271 radar that the H class has. And all you boats that are on a side. So again, that is the entirety of the side. So all over here, if the destroyer is wherever. So being on the left side, he can detect all here. But if he was forward, he could detect all there. Same thing. He can't detect everywhere, only on the side that he's at. So getting all your ships with the Type 271 radar is, is so crucial because it gives you all those extra avenues of, of coverage. Uh, uh, you do the HFDF, do the 271, and then attempt to detect with uh, ASDIC uh, DIC, all U-boats adjacent to any uh, escorts equipped with that. I don't know which escorts are equipped with that. That is a good question. I'm not sure which ones have that. Okay, well, that AS thing is sonar, and I'm not exactly sure which ones have sonar. So, yeah, it is what it is. I don't know if there's any modifiers for detection. Uh, you detect, it says in the rule book that you detect U-boats uh, with HFDF on a 1 to 3. With the 271, you detect it on either a 1 or 2, or a 1 and a 2. Uh, a 1 during the day and a 1 or 2 at night. And for the sonar, it's a 1 to 3. And then there's just generalized detection, and I think that is after the U-boat has uh, performed its attack. But we do get a plus 2 modifier for that one, for it being 1942. And there's other things that can come into play, but we're not worrying about that just yet because we got to detect him on the way in and try to sink him before, before he puts any damage. Now you notice I have not put target ships out yet. I don't do that until he actually closes with the convoy. If I kill him, then we don't have to worry about that. All right, so let's do for our HFDF. 
radar, and we did get in with HFDF, so we don't have to worry about flipping over to the 271. So we can flip his counter. He's now on his detected side. Detection. Now we do our thing. So if we detect him, we go to card six. If we don't detect him, we go to card seven. Now we can do our attack on him. Detected U boats are attacked on chart B4. If any escorts are adjacent or have moved adjacent, loop back to B3 if not sunk. Uh, if undetected on B3, encounter ends for that U boat for that cycle. If undetected on B3 but damaged, the U boat is done for the rest of the encounter. So you don't have to sink them, you can just damage them, and it'll be enough. But we are going to attempt to damage him. All right, that's attack damage. That's the U boat. Torpedo to hit chart. Where's my depth charges? Is this what this? Uh, escort air attack. Okay. I'm going to do a 2d6 roll and I get some modifiers trying to attack him and how many hits I cause. I get a, what do we get? Uh, night surface attack. So I'm getting a plus one, plus one for H class and no negative modifier for being only one escort. So I'm getting a plus two to my roll. Plus two to my roll to attempt to cause him damage. And I'll take it. I'll take that. I'll take that. Five. 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 Okay, why does it say five set instead of five hits? 13 plus is a is a U-boat sunk. But I'm like, what's five set? What the hell do you mean set? That's either a misprint or I'm missing something. All right. Uh, I'm not using hedgehogs. Okay. Basically, from here, I've got to do these rolls to see where he gets damages. So let's just grab out a chart real quick. Let's just grab out a little target map here. We'll just set this on top. And we're going to walk through him attacking the convoy just in case uh, we do sink him. But my guess is we're going to get enough to sink him. Let me grab a few damage markers here. Got our type 7. All right, where are we going with this? Shit, those are different colors. I'll do it left to right, 45. Hull, so he's done. That, that ends him right off the bat. I don't even need to roll. I mean, he could be sunk, but... Let's do another one. That's 46. 46 will be his flat gun. Uh, flat gun, damaged. I should have three more left, so I'll pull that counter off. All right, where else are we hitting him? Uh, 62, 62's torpedo door, aft. And 52, 52 is going to be another hull hit. We'll just tick that down. And what else do we have? Oh, throw you in there. Uh, we'll just take it. 16. 16 is electric motor. Electric motor one. Bam. Just like that, he has taken a slew of hits from our depth chargers, two to his hull and three to the actual U-boat itself. Now this actually finishes his attack. Uh, if you don't sink them, they do peel off. They try to escape. And this is where you do attempt to try to detect them again. Okay, after rereading it, there is an example of play that goes over this. So once I have already performed the attack, uh, then I'm gonna go to this B3 chart, all right? And that's where I'm going to attempt to detect him. But I do get some modifiers and I get whatever modifiers apply from the damage that I've just done. And that gives me a chance to conduct another attack and keep him from uh, slipping away. So for us, if he goes undetected, that's going to be a roll of a 2 to 8 on a 2d6. He slips out. 9 or above, he stays. But we get a plus 2 
And do we get anything else? Previous detection, so that's plus one. Two escorts plus one, so we get a plus four. Pretty good chance that we could probably get this guy. All right, so plus four. Oh, yeah, he's definitely detected. All right, so in that case, we could continue to perform attacks against the U-boat. Oh, he's got a nice little incoming hits. I just noticed that here at the bottom, so I don't have to use counters. Now, that we could continue to do until he goes undetected or is sunk. We are going to say that he's not sunk for our purposes, just so I can keep the game going a little bit, because I don't want to waste you guys' times on just rolls, but I do want to show the part where a U-boat comes in and tries to attack the convoy. All right, so U-boat versus convoy. Undetected U-boats, they go, they're going to roll for whatever range. It's just a simple D6 roll. Let's see what range he's got. He's a four, so it's going to be medium. We'll flip him over to undetected. Understand for our purposes he was detected and we did the whole thing, but we're just showing it, just showing it, okay? Showing it because I want to make sure everybody sees the example. So we're going to throw roll for three targets, choose targets by rolling on C1. And you know, what gets me sometimes is they've got these charts uh, labeled and everything, but sometimes you get the, the numbers on different things. All right, uh, is it here? Is this uh, two largest? Which ones we doing? Medium range. Okay. Each U-boat rolls for three targets and will shoot torpedoes at them based on their size and 2D6 result of a, let's see, example, largest 2T, 2T means two largest targets by tonnage will each get two torpedoes. Oh, okay, so that's what they're firing at, but I need to know what they're firing at. And what chart is that on again? Oh, here it is. Target size is 1d6. So we got a d6. Let's roll real quick so we get. We got a five, which is a large freighter. Where's my large freighter? I'll throw him right there. And we need two more. Another large freighter. We'll throw him right there. And one more target, another four. Let's take a small freighter just to throw something different. I don't want three large freighters there. Okay. And now here it's talking about what he's going to do and what he's going to target. So he's going to roll there on chart C1. And he rolls for the three targets. Attacks targets by rolling on the B1. So that's the other chart we were just on. Told you it's all about the charts, man. It's all about the charts. He got a 10. 10 is largest three, smallest one. It's got three of those. If day, these are GE, it's night. So he can't do that. But he is going to fire at the largest three torpedoes, and at the smallest, one torpedo. So we've got the largest and the smallest. Now, I think for ease, you would probably just use the generics, but you can roll for the specific ships and their specific tonnages. But like I said, there are just generic numbers you can use. Uh, something like smalls, 2,000, large is 4,000, tankers, 6,000, or something along those lines. And I think that's easier than rolling on this. But this is more accurate. This is more thematic. If you want to use this chart. I was wondering, I was like, is this a misprint? But no, that's the way it's supposed to look. No, it's not. It's cut off. I just noticed this. This player aid is offset. It is just a scotch too far to the right. Yeah, it wasn't printed squarely there. They're gonna have to fix that. Yeah, yeah, it's the large size of the freighter map. I mean, it's it's no big deal for us. It's it's not gonna affect the game, but that is something to notice. All right, where's our combat? Okay, let's do our combat against him. He's going to fire three torpedoes at the largest and one torpedo at the smallest torpedo to hit chart and the modifiers. 
And this is night, so this should be a surface attack. You know, I gave myself the bonus earlier, so we're gonna give him the negative, give him the bonus. But he's not getting the G7Es. Uh, but yep, no G7E, so he's not getting that bonus either. So, or not getting that penalty. Damn, I wish he did have that penalty. Okay, so that means he is going to get a negative one. And he's trying to hit at medium ranges, so he wants low numbers. I want high. He's got one hit. And we'll just throw down torpedoes here as he hits, just so I remember. Second one, uh, that's a miss. So he's got two left. That is another hit. And for the last one, for the small one, miss. All right, so he hit one large freighter. Let's see if he takes the freighter out. Roll on 1d6, and it's damage to sink how many tons? Uh, that's a five, that's one damage. So he needs at least two damage to sink this large freighter. Six is one damage. Oh, he didn't sink it. You miss, you whiff. You pansy punk, you loser. Loser, you missed. Okay. So that is how the U-boats will conduct their attack. A little bit neater than I did it, but I was flipping through the uh, the charts. And that's the thing. That is my biggest drawback with these games. Like I said, I love these games, but until you get fluid with them, you're just constantly just doing this. And it, it's the first handful of times you play it, you're going to just be flipping through as you get to the damn charts. It is what it is. All right, so the only thing left is there is one more chance to detect the U-boat as he is uh, leaving out. You can uh, try to attack him. Uh, obviously, depending on the scenario, like in this scenario, we would want to sink him because we've only had like one round. So this we're still at night. There's still a day left. If he lives, then he can attack again the next day. Although he wouldn't because he took a buttload of damage. So he'd be done. Uh, for ours, right? For our example, but had we done it to where he wasn't damaged and did attack the large freighters and he got out, then he could attack on the next day. Okay. And we do have our little marker here for range. I just put the U-boat there, but it doesn't matter. You can use the, uh, the marker if you want. Now that's for the attacks. Okay. So we've done our attack cards. This goes over the combat sequence that I was just talking about, the combat cycle. So first impulse, second impulse, uh, third impulse, and then U-boats leaving. Now, especially this is going to be important when you have like uh, wolf packs. So you've got multiple U-boats across the map. You can move your ships around between these impulses. So as the U-boats are moving, you can move your ships too. You don't have to leave them where they are. Right, because there's a chance that uh, some of these freighters might get damaged and they go down to the stragglers box. You can move an escort down over here to escort X and try to cover for that freighter so it doesn't get taken out. Feel free to move you guys around as needed as you're going along because the uh, the U boats are going to be coming in and out, especially if there's more than one attacking you. Card nine is just the uh, air encounter that we already talked about, and end mission is just arrival at the West OMP. Like I said, you don't have to get to the port. You just get to that West OMP or the East uh, OMP and you mark it down as a successful mission. The only time you wouldn't is if a freighter or a tanker gets sunk, then you will mark that down in your log sheet and you're gonna circle it that, hey, this freighter got sunk. Like I said in my review, that means the points are against you instead of for you. This time you're not trying to sink the freighters, you're trying to guard the freighters. All right, so that's the the, the basic gist of how Atlantic Sentinels is played. I understand I didn't play it perfectly. I am positive I probably missed a modifier in there too. It is what it is. There are buttloads of modifiers. It's just a lot to keep track of, so I'm, I'm bound to miss one. All right. Uh, just some more final thoughts for it as uh, as we're going through. Like I said, there's a couple little things I noticed that were missed on the cards, like where you're rolling for the weather. Make sure you account for that. 
I think the cards can be fleshed out just a little bit. It does get fiddly, but games like this are fiddly. You're constantly flipping through the charts. I think you already know if this game is for you or not. I will say for me personally, me personally, I like Silent Victory or The Hunters more than I like The Escort. And I think that has to do with the Maddox. It's just... I don't know, something resonates in my mind that it's neater to be the submarine that's coming in. I've got my little stack of torpedoes. It, it reminds me of that video game, uh, Cold Waters. God, love that game. Friggin' excellent. If you haven't tried it, it's one of the best submarine games out there. But you have so many supplies, uh, so much of a sub. You can't take too much damage. So it's just a push to try to get as much damage to the enemy shipping as possible with the, the ammo and the goods that you have, uh, making that choice between doing a surface attack and being able to use your five inch gun or just sticking with your torpedoes. For me, that is just cooler than dealing with the escorts. But there are some people who probably do like the, the idea of the escorts, being able to have your destroyers, your Corvettes, moving them around, trying to protect the uh, the sheep, right, from the wolf packs coming in. I think this is going to resonate with some players. Uh, part of it, I think, is the fact that I'm, I'm another level out, right? So in games like Silent Victory, I, the sub is my thing. My, I have my one thing. So like American Tank Ace, I have my tank. There's, there's battle going on around me, but that tank is mine. This little piece of the battle is mine. And now we're, we're stepped out. So imagine American Tank Ace, but instead of just controlling a tank, now you're controlling a tank platoon or a tank company, and you've got multiple tanks. It takes you out of that personal feel that you would have with American Tank Ace. Sorry, my little boys in the background needed to tell me something about the dog, but it, uh, it takes you out a little bit, right? But I almost guarantee you now that, now that I said that, uh, Greg's going to take and make a game like American Tank Ace where you got a tank company or a tank platoon instead of just a, a single tank. Make sure I get credited, right? Idea came from Gimpy. All right, but anyway, I hope this helped you guys out, maybe uh, helped you work through a little bit of the game. Just understand it's a game. You don't have to play it perfect. You're, you're going to miss modifiers. You're going to miss something here, miss something there play a handful of convoys. You're not going to get it perfect until you're on like your third or fourth convoy. And that's fine. It's your game. It's your log sheet. Nobody else knows. It's a solitaire game. Just have fun with it. If you have fun with it, that's all that matters. You don't have to worry about anybody else because there is no one else at the table but you, right? All right. But anyway, that's going to be it for me. I hope you guys enjoyed this one. Y'all take care and I will catch you in the next one.